Hello, I'm Svetlin Nakov from SoftUni and in this lesson I will continue teaching programming with Java and preparation for the certification exam Java Foundations. And today's lesson is about defining classes. I will go further after the objects and classes uh, the previous lesson and I will introduce how you can define classes in Java and how you deal with class definition, with member definitions, such as defining fields, defining public and private uh, members, defining properties with accessors, getters, setters, and um, how to define methods, how to deal with constructors and constructors overloading, and as well as working with status, static methods and static fields. Um, so I will go uh, only in some details because I have another lesson after that about the OOP principles where I will get uh, into deep, deeper details about uh, encapsulation, inheritance, abstractions and polymorphism. So uh, let's consider that the lesson about object-oriented programming is split into three parts. The first were the previous lesson uh, the simple objects and classes, uh, the second is defining classes, and the next one is OOP principles. So let's start with defining classes. The lesson content is as following. I will start with defining simple classes. The, the class structure defined with the keyword class. I will explain how to define very simple class with few fields and how to access these fields, how to create objects of this class and how to use this uh, newly defined class. Later, I will go deeper into the concepts of field inside classes and will explain how classes keep they, their private data uh, through the access modifiers such as private, protected and public and how to use class fields. Later, I will continue with methods. Methods are called also sub-programs which are named pieces of functionality which can be invoked later. Uh, they can take parameters and uh, they can return a value. I'll show you how to use this. You may be already familiar with methods because you already use methods such as system out print ln, print ln is a method. And I will go further with uh, explaining the concept of getters and set setters which allow us to keep our fields private and to limit the access to, to them through these getters which read their value and setters which change their value uh, but under certain uh, restrictions which you can define. And I will uh, also explain the concepts of to string, the um, universal method in all uh, objects which uh, transforms the, uh, the object into uh, text representation. For example, if we have a student uh, holding a first name, last name and age, the to string method should print the student information. This the student name, the student email, uh, age, etc., etc., etc. So uh, at the next uh, section, I will uh, explain the concept of constructors, uh, which are used when you create a new object to assign the initial state of the objects. Constructors can take parameters and you may have several constructors. For example, if you have a student which has first name, last name and age, you can create an empty student without any data in it or with an empty constructor or you may have may invoke another constructor which has uh, first name and last name and just another constructor which has first name plus last name plus email. So constructors initialize the object state and uh, together with the getters and setters they implement the concept of encapsulation which I'll explain in more detail uh, in the next lesson but uh, it, it generally tells that the internal state of the um, objects should be uh, uh, kept in consistent state, which means, for example, if you have an elevator in a building of seven floors, you cannot have a, uh, the, the current uh, floor to be minus 3000, for example. 
which is in correct state. Uh, I will introduce the keyword this, which accesses the current instance, the current object. I'll show you many examples. And finally, I will talk about static members, how to use static methods, static fields, and even static con constructors uh, to have functionality, which is shared between all class instances, uh, which is a kind of class level or shared functionality not uh, related to the, the objects of the class. Okay, let's start. As you already know, all our trainings are practical oriented, which means that you learn by doing. My concept for training software engineers uh, in the last 15 years is always based on the doing part, which means that you should write code. So in my lessons, I always give assignments, uh, problems for solving that you need to write the code. And I have prepared for you an automated judge system, a system where you send your solutions for evaluations. And the judge contest for uh, the current lesson is this one, uh, Java Foundations course at judge.softuni.org. So when you enter here in the practice, you may uh, select a problem. And when you type enter your code, your solution, and click submit, you can wait a little bit and see whether your solution is correct or not. Oh, it takes unusually long, long time, uh, but my solution, as you see, is correct. So the idea here is that you have an automated judge system and it's very, very important that you write code and you submit your code for evaluation to be sure that your code is correct. So instead of having a teacher uh, near you to, to, to look at your code, we have an automated teacher, automated judge system where you, you send your code. So exercises are important. They are more important than watching videos if you want to learn the profession of Java developer. So please don't skip them. Let's go ahead with the first topic for today's lesson. And it's about defining very simple classes. Uh, I will talk about the class definition, the class name, the class body, and simple class members. So let's start. Defining simple classes is about uh, defining um, your own type in Java, which uh, is, in fact, uh, giving a specification of some type of objects from the real world because classes provide structure for describing and creating objects. For example, if you have a class student, it will have first name, last name, age, email, and some other data, which is the structure. So the structure means that all students have email, all students have first name and last name, and some fields could be optional, of course, but students don't have color, for example, and they don't have speed because it's irrelevant. So the concepts of classes is that we extract the important uh, properties of the objects from real world and we model them through classes. So this is an example. We have a class car. It's defined through the keyword class uh, in Java and the class has name. It's usually some noun, for example, car, student, address, or uh, for example, it, it could be array list or something uh, which the name says what's inside. And it has also class body, just like methods, just like uh, uh, whoop body. This is the place where you, you put the code which belongs to the class. So when you name classes, you should use uh, this style of naming, like big integer. The first letter should be capital and each uh, next uh, word letter, letter of each next word should also be capital. Uh, big int is a bad naming concept because it, it uses underscore, which is not used in Java naming. And this letter should be capital and this letter should be also capital and this should be missing. So classes should explain what the class represents. Their name should be meaningful. Uh, so you should avoid unclear and ambiguous names, just like these names are good. For example, class dice, what's inside? It's a dice with, for example, six sides, 
from 1 to 6, etc. What's inside a bank account? It, it should be something like a bank account, which has some balance, some interest, etc., etc., etc. What is an inter integer calculator? It should be something which makes calculations with integer numbers, maybe. It, the only uh, way this name could be wrong is when you have bank account, but inside it's uh, information about a dog. <laughs> so it's it's uh, wrong name. But basically, your name should answer the question, what's inside? Uh, these are bad ideas to name your class, for example, TPMF, it is some kind of abbreviation which is unclear, so you should avoid it. Uh, naming with lowercase letters, it's not the Java way, so you should use this capital and this capital. Or numcalc with small letters, it's not good enough. So you, it should be number calculator, for example, with capital letters for each word. Okay, let's go ahead and define some um, some class, classes and class members. So classes are made up of state plus behavior. What means state? State is uh, a set of fields which tell the what's inside the data in the class. And behavior, this is what the class can do. For example, uh, the dog can bark, the car can speed up, uh, or start or stop the engine. Uh, so this is the behavior and the state is, for example, the car uh, is red, it is uh, BMW or it's Toyota and the dog is named, for example, uh, Rafi. Okay, so fields store data. This is called fields. They are just variables in the traditional programming. In object-oriented programming, the members of the class which store data are called fields. They have type and they have they may have value at the runtime and they don't have value on, at the time of definition. They have just a specification, just a declaration at the time of definition. And when you create a, a car, you assign values in this state, you assign some data. For example, uh, you assign a brand and model inside the car when you create a new car. You may have two cars. The first is Toyota Yaris and the second is Ford Escort, for example. And you may have two dogs. Uh, the first is uh, Dodo uh, at age of three and the second is Rafi at age of four, for example. Uh, so the behavior uh, I, in Java, this is the methods declaration. So you declare methods, you declare some kind of functionality, which are basically methods, uh, just like we already have used. Uh, and methods have a name, they may have par parameters, they may have return value, and they have a body, a, a sequence of uh, commands uh, to implement their actions. So, if you have already declared an object, you can create an object, or it's called also instantiate, create an instance of the, uh, an object like this. So, you say car first car equals to new car. New car, this is the, the way you create a new object. New is the operator for creating a new object. For example, you can create a new array list, or new string, or new car. Uh, the same way you create a system object, uh, object from a standard li Java library just like ArrayList, the same way you can create a car or you can create a dog, a, a, a object that you have defined. And this car with the brackets invokes the default constructor, the constructor without parameters which assigns the initial value. We don't have it, but when we don't have any constructor, the compiler will create one for us which is empty and this is just variable definition like we have int i x equals to 5 in the same way we, we can have car first card equals to new car and this is uh, another example how we can can create another different car so we may have two cars and we use the new keyword and we should have variables to store a reference to the newly created object. 
So before going ahead, I will start IntelliJ IDEA and I will uh, create an example for you. I will write some code because I want to show you code, not just slides. Uh, and I highly recommend that you write the code, that you write your own classes and that you solve your um, practical hands-on exercises. Okay, so where is my IntelliJ idea? I should find it. It should be somewhere in the... Ah, it, it's here. Okay, so I have an already open uh, project which I will close first and I will uh, create an entirely new new object. Okay, so a uh, new, new project. I create a new project which is Java uh, and I will give it a name uh, for example, uh, it will be Command Line App uh, in my projects folder. I have a folder for my projects, uh, and it will be called, for example, uh, classes in Java. Please don't use uh, small letters here. Uh, classes in Java is also a good name. Uh, I usually put this in project names, this kind of uh, naming, uh, but don't use spaces and special characters or don't use capitals like this. It's a bad idea. So this is a good name for my project because uh, it answers the questions what inside, what's inside the classes in Java. There are some classes <laughs> which are defined in Java. Okay, so I have an empty project here. Uh, I don't know which is why it is untitled 104. No, something went uh, wrongly uh, because and my IntelliJ idea hang. It looks like it's opened the entire projects directory, which holds maybe 200 projects, and it's slow. So I will close this and I will open it again. So I am trying to create a new project and I will look more carefully what happens. So, project um, classes in Java in the folder C projects, okay? This should be correct. Oh, I O it doesn't exist, which is good. This is what I want. Okay, so I have an empty project, Java project with which has a single class called main, main.java, and here it's my, um, it's my code. Okay, so I'm ready, and I'll create a new class. How would I create a class? I click here, new, and I select Java class. Okay, so after that, I should give a name to my class. For example, my class will be a car. Okay, so I have the car class and I can increase and decrease the font with the control and the mouse wheel um, when I switch on these uh, options from the set option from the settings. Okay, so I define a field private. It should be private. I'll explain this a little bit later. Private, for example, uh, string uh, brand. Cars have brand and cars have model. Because, but I will make this public for now because we still didn't learn about uh, the getters and setters and I will just show you a very, very, very simple uh, object, uh, class definition. It's a class card which holds just these two brand and model uh, fields coupled together. Okay, how I create a car? I write car, car equals to new car, and the brand is BMW, and the model is X3. Okay, I have this object. What can I do with it? Uh, oh, sorry, I, I don't have this constructor. I just create a car, and I assign the brand, which is BMW, and I assign a model dot model enter equals to x3 
and I can, for example, print the uh, something like I have a car. Its brand is plus car dot brand plus its model is plus car dot model. Okay, I can even split this into several lines to to make it more more easy to to read. Just when you split lines, it's better to do it logically. So this one is uh, the first part, and this one is the second part. So I split them logically. I can move left and right with tap and shift tap. Okay, so let's run this program. Right click and I say run main. It will, the project will be compiled and it says I have a car and its brand is BMW and its model is X3. Okay, let's create another, another object. So I create, for example, Toyota. And the first car will be named Shift F6 renames uh, a this one and it will be named BMW. And I have a Toyota. I have created a, a, an object called Toyota and it will be Toyota, for example, Yaris. And I can print uh, something like uh, with printf, my car is uh, percent s percent s and uh, Toyota dot brand and Toyota dot model. So when I run this, I'll have two cars. The first car is BMW X3 and the second is Toyota Yaris. So I have two object, two objects. I will even Debug this because I want to show you these objects in action uh, in in the memory. So I will run this through the debugger, debug main. I right click and say. So do you see here? I have two uh, two objects. See what's inside. I have a first car which is uh, has ID eight six five and the second car which has an internal ID. 866, which are different cars. So I have these two different cars which have different brands and models. So they are different objects, just like in the real world. In the real world, someone could have two cars and they are different. So this is how our objects and classes basically work in Java. In the most simplest uh, in the most simplest variant of their existence. So the public class car holds just two fields. Later we'll learn that public fields are not good practice and we should use getters and setters, but please be patient. So what is an object reference? An object reference is when you declare a, a variable of type class. Uh, when you declare a variable, its reference stays in the stack and the new keyword allocates uh, a place in the so-called dynamic memory or heap. So when you execute this code car first cars equals to new new car uh, brackets, this will make this object the, the first car in the, in the stack here. Uh, okay, this is the first first car here and it will be a class car and this is a kind of reference. So this reference is a kind of address in the heap. So for example, if we have, if we have i equals 5, which is int, it will be just 5 here in the stack. But when we have an object created with new, it's always a reference. In some languages, this is called a pointer, a pointer to a remote memory address. And here is the 
car data and here we have only one integer number which is just an ID of the object in the heap. So generally objects are reference types in Java and they live in the heap. Their values are always stored in the heap. Objects like strings, like cars, like students, like array list. And uh, in, uh, basic types, types, uh, value types, which are not objects, just like uh, uh, int, uh, float, uh, boolean, etc. They always stay in the stack and then they don't go in the heap. This is the general idea of, of value types and reference types. So classes and provide structure for creating objects, just like this example. For example, we have class ties, which have sides, for example, six sides, and it can roll. And when you roll the dice, it will give you uh, it will give you some some result. For example, the result uh, six. You you know this dice? It's in in games. Uh, and when you draw it, it will mm, display this picture. When you roll it, it will uh, get a random. Uh, a random value for his internal state and it has six sides but sometimes we may have dices of <laughs> three sides or um, different size or four sides for example uh, okay so this is the class name this is the fields section and this is the actions section this is what i already did i had a class car uh, the name was car it has some fields, uh, brand and model, and it was empty list of methods still. We'll declare some methods later. And an object is a single instance of a class, uh, like this one. I have an object with six sides. This is the object name, like I had a, mm, a car named Toyota and another car named uh, BMW. And this is the object data or the state. The set of all fields, the internal data in the object is called state. Let's talk a little bit more about class data, about the fields which store the object's internal state in classes. So class fields have access modifiers, type and name. This is an example for the public class car, which holds a brand of type string this is the type, which is string. This is the name, which is brand. And uh, this is the um, access modifier, which is private. So we have this, um, these three fields, which are private, and they hold brand, year, and owner of different types. And the type could be simple, just like int or string, or can be another class uh, that you have already defined, like person, for example. Here we should define first the person class. Uh, so let's solve a problem. We want to define a simple class car, which holds brand, model, and horsepower. Of, uh, the brand is of type string, the model is of type string, and the horsepower uh, is of type int, and the class name is car, these are the fields, and these are the methods which are empty list, we don't have methods until now, and when we are ready, we should be able to create a car like this, we should be able to assign the fields in the card like this, and we should be able to print a car data like this. Okay, so you should ensure a proper naming. For example, the car should be with a capital letter and uh, not with a small letter. And the solution could be something like this. And here I should uh, give you a special warning that fields should be private here. I can even skip skip this uh, access modifier. When I skip it, it's the default, which is a package level visibility, which means that all the um, all the 
classes from the current package, from the current uh, sub um, portion of the, of the program, can access it. But we'll talk about visibility of a little bit more later. Uh, so generally fields should be private and we should have getters and setters, but please be patient. I'll talk about a little bit uh, later. So access modifiers could de declare the visibility. Visibility means that if you have a class and another class, uh, the first class cannot directly access everything in the second class. Just like if you have a TV at home, uh, you cannot directly access what's be, uh, behind the cover. Or if you have a car, you first, you don't know what's inside the engine. You don't want to know what's inside the, the engine. Uh, so some um, internals of the engine or of the objects in Java can, be, can not be public. So public means visible to everyone. So all classes have access. Private means visible to the current class only. Protected, we'll learn more about this in the next lesson. This means visible to the current class and all subclasses, all classes which inherit the current class through the inheritance in object-oriented programming. And this is uh, an example where we have a public class modifier and private member modifier. So classes can be public, private, etc. And uh, fields in the class could be public, private, protected, and, and maybe some others. But these are the main, public, private, and protected. And let's see, let's see this in action. So I have this class car already, and I will add a public field, which is of type and it will be called horse power. And this is the correct naming. This is not correct. This is the correct naming. And I could assign to my BMW dot horsepower equals, for example, 150 horsepower. And uh, I will print also its power is plus the BMW plus the BMW uh, dot horsepower plus HP, for example. And my Toyota will mm, have the power of percent G H P. And when I print my Toyota, I will print also the horsepower as well, dot horsepower. Okay, let's run this program now, the modified program. And I'll have two cars. Oh, looks like uh, BMW.model. I have erased this by mistake. I will run this again. I'll have two cars. And the first car is BMW X3 with 150 uh, horsepower. And uh, I had a mistake here. And the, the other card is Toyota Yaris with zero horsepower because when I keep assigning uh, some of these fields, they have their default value, which means that int holds zero, string holds no. And for example, Boolean holds false. If I don't assign an object in a class, it will always take its default value. This is how Java works. So I can assign this horsepower here, uh, for example, 120 horsepower. And when I run it, it will have now its full data. If I stop this through the debugger, like this, uh, I right click and press debug, I will see that I have two cars. And the first is this one, which is BMW X3 150 horsepower. And Toyota Yaris with 120 horsepower. Okay, so this is how this works. And if I change something to private, my code will no longer compile. See, if I click run now, 
uh, it will say the PRAN has a private access and it cannot be accessed. If I have also protected, it will be the same. Mm, protected works because it's in the same package maybe. Let me try. If I have protected, it works because it's visible in the current package. So these classes are in the same package, which means in the same folder generally in Java. Uh, I will talk about packages in some other lesson, but generally this is this one package, for example, you, you choose. I may have package, for example, uh, text. It is for example, import and I import a package. So java.util, this is a package which holds all these classes, ArrayList, Collection, Scanner and the others. These are the packages, the classes in this package. And in Java text, I have other classes. Do you understand the idea of packages? This is a set of classes could be put together in a package, but we don't use package now. Okay, so uh, if these are private, this will not compile because this class main cannot see this private in here. If I don't put anything, then by default, this is just a string print and it is with a package visibility which means that uh, files in, in the current folder here can, can see it, but if I have a subfolder here, a subfolder uh, um, or a sub package, uh, for example, you choose, and if I have something here, this class will not be able it first needs to import the car. Uh, hmm, it's a little bit more complex. It, it should import the car, but this car has not package and it cannot say import because how to import it? It, it has no name. Mm, packages are used in bigger projects. Now we, we will not use packages, but basically you can have uh, either no, vi no visibility like this, which means package level visibility without having public or private, it is the default. And also it's better to have public or private or public or protected explicitly defined for your fields. This will also work. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, please be warned that fields should always be private and should have accessors, but it's uh, will be, I'll, I'll talk about them a little bit later. Just be patient. Let's talk about methods, getters and setters in a class, which basically define actions inside the class, which can be invoked by external objects. Just you type object dot something like uh, out dot print ln or string dot substring. These are called methods or actions. So methods store executable code or a sequence of commands or some algorithms implementation uh, that is designed to manipulate the object's internal state. For example, if we have this class car here and it has some data, it may, ha may define also some actions, some methods, some something which can be invoked, which is designed to manipulate the internal state. So this is also called a member method method which is a member of the class because we have also static method like the public static void main uh, which is not member it's it's just 
it, it's it doesn't deal with the class uh, with objects data so let's see what's inside this increase hp this is a method definition just like any other method which can be public private or protected and it can be void or can return some data it can take some parameters in, in like this one and it has a name the names of the methods in java should be with a small letter and um, it says that please change the horsepower by increasing it with some certain value let's see this in action in intellij idea here so if i have the class car and i can define public void increase horsepower for example with end value and i say uh horsepower plus equals to value so the horsepower is this. If I click control, I can navigate with the mouse and the value is this. I can see uh, where is this horsepower and where is this value. And I have declared a method inside a class. It's called a member method, member of the class. Like these are member fields. Okay, so I can print this car Toyota and after that I can upgrade the Toyota and increase their its horsepower by for example 50 more and then print it again I I go with shift and the uh, uh, arrows control C I move down with the arrow control V this is how I copy paste because I see some developers copy paste with the mouse just like uh, copy and paste this is slow please use shortcuts and i can run the program with pressing ctrl plus f5 which is another shortcut uh, and i have here missing the the new line so let's see before the change my toyota were 120 horsepower and now it has 170. Mm. This is how methods work. They are designed to manipulate the internal state of the class, but they are not obligated to do so. They can just make some calculation or uh, print something. It's not necessary that methods change something. Okay, we have a in Java we have a special kinds of methods called accessors and mutators or getters and setters getters are methods which get a value and setters are methods which set a value let's see an example so we have this private field called horsepower uh, horsepower and this is a private or hidden field it cannot be accessed by external class uh, like we saw a few moments ago but i can create get horsepower this is called getter which returns this dot horsepower which returns uh, the horsepower from the current object from this object instance okay and this is called getter because it starts with the word cat method which starts with the word cat and returns a value and is in most cases public it's called getter or accessor this is the other word but generally it's called getter getter provides read access uh, to the field it takes uh, returns its value and the this keyword this is a special keyword in java means the current object instance which means the current car please get the current object the current car and take its horsepower and return it set horsepower it's called setter it works in very similar way but it starts with the word set it's always void and it's in most cases public and it's designed to modify 
the horsepower uh, internal field. So the idea is that when we invoke set horsepower, for example, 50, the horsepower will be changed to 50 and the old value will be uh, forgotten. For, forgotten. Okay, so setters are or mutators, this is the other word, but setters is most popular, are designed to modify the value of certain field and they can only also perform some checks. For example, if you try to assign a negative power, this setter can say, oh, this is not allowed, please don't do it. Why? Like if you have a TV uh, remote control and if you try to uh, access channel number minus five, uh, it will not be possible. The setter will tell you that it's not allowed. But I will talk about more about this. This is called encapsulation in the next lesson. So let's see how this works in action. I have my class car and I can make this field private horsepower. When I create this horsepower private, this code will no longer compile. It will give me errors and will fail to, to execute. So I need to provide uh, these setters and getters. So I say uh, I will write public uh, int cat horsepower and it will return the horsepower, which is the same like this dot horsepower. But it's better to have this dot horsepower because it's obviously that it is a um, class member, a class, a field in the class. If you write just like this, this could be a normal variable and it's the code becomes less readable. Uh, both will work the same way, but this dot and the field is the better way to do it. And now instead of having horsepower, will have get horsepower. I have very good how to complete here. If I try to type the, um, the field name, it will provide me the public methods, which are designed for external classes like my main class. Main class could access the public fields of car. So car provides ex um, the so-called public interface. It consists of constructors, getters, setters, but the public fields. Get horsepower, but here I assign the course horsepower and this is no, no longer possible when this is a private field, okay? So I will define a setter, public void set, horsepower, this is the autocomplete in IntelliJ idea, and int hp, for example, and I will say this dot horsepower equals to hp. Okay, and now I should change this, set horsepower of 150. And set horsepower, it's not equal, no longer equal, like this and I believe I don't have more problems so I can run the program yes and it works exactly the same way so you will tell now I have more code and why I do this private it's easier to have it public and yes it's true it's easier to have it public but having Ketters and setters gives you more control. Just like, uh, let's take an example from the real world. If we have an elevator and it knows which is the current floor where the elevator stays, and we have a building of seven floors, it will be illegal to send, to assign the current floor to be minus 100. And here at the set horsepower, well, at, or set four will have some kind of check. If HP is bigger than, uh, for example, 1000 
or HP is less than 10, we'll throw a new illegal argument exception. We'll learn more about exceptions in the le next lessons, but basically, you, if you want to say, oh, please stop, there is an error here, you throw an exception. And this is how it works. And the exception types should explain what's the problem. The problem here is that the argument is illegal and you should print some message, for example, uh, invalid horse power. Uh, and you should print, for example, uh, the, what was the argument value and why it's invalid. So now the program will wor work as expected. But if I try to assign very huge horsepower, which is more for rockets, not for <laughs> cars, uh, it will give me an error. See, exception in thread main. You may know already these exceptions because if you try to parse, for example, integer and you enter your name, not an integer value, it will say a uh, number format exception or something like this. Okay, so I have invalid horsepower now. If I try to assign minus one, I'll have also invalid horsepower minus one. But if I put a normal horsepower, one, 160, it will say, okay, your BMW is 160 horsepower. So did you get the idea? The idea is that you should always keep your member fields private and you should provide or not getters and setters. For example, if I don't provide a setter, if I delete this, this field will be read only. You can read it, but you can't modify it. You can modify it through some other operations. For example, I can increase the horsepower many times until you reach. For example, I don't have a setter, okay? And my car cannot set horsepower, but it can increase it with 160. And starting from zero, it will still have horsepower which cannot be directly uh, manipulated. So setters are defined in cases when you want to uh, allow external classes to modify uh, the, the value. Uh, I want to show you an example from the real world. For example, I have string str is equals to hello. And I want to change this L. I can say uh, str.char at five, and this will return me the fifth letter, for example. But I cannot set char at five x. Why? Because string doesn't allow to change the internal state. Behind the string, if you look in the source code, I, I press control and the, the, the mouse click with the control key, uh, hold it during the time of this, you may see that there is a byte array. The value of the string is in fact array of bytes. It's quite complex what's inside the string but do you see there are bytes here and you are not allowed to change what's inside the string because the string by design is immutable which means unmodifiable and this car by design is mutable you can freely modify it so this encapsulation the private fields together with getters and setters, allow you to have control over uh, the internal state and its modification over the time. Okay, it's very boring to write setters and getters by hand, so I will show you how you can generate them. 
So we have two, pr three private fields, brand, model, and horsepower. And I want to insert getters or setters. I either click, right click, and say generate, and they I use getters or setters, or I just print out plus insert buttons in my key keyboard, and I say getters and setters, and I select with shift and the mouse, shift and the mouse, I select which uh, properties to have automatic generated getter and setter. And see them? Did you see the magic? I have get brand, set brand, get model, set model, get horsepower, set horsepower. But I don't have a check for the input data. Or oh, any, any value is allowed. And it's normal, IntelliJ idea. Uh, cannot know what are the correct and incorrect values. And now I should change this to be set brand BMW because it's no longer a public field and set model. And when I read this, I say get brand and get model. And again, here I say set brand. It is Toyota, my brand, and I say set model, which is Yaris, Toyota Yaris, and I already have set horsepower, but when I print, I will use get brand and get model. This is how it works in Java. In mm, some languages like uh, C Sharp and JavaScript, it could be easier, but without get these getters and setters, they can be hidden, uh, but this is how it works in Java, and we now learn Java. So, this is the same program now, and the result will be exactly the same when I run it, but it's uh, done correctly. So, I have three fields which are hidden, they are encapsulated, they are private, and I have public getters and setters for these fields. Okay, let's go ahead. I already demonstrated how to use the generator for getters and setters from the ID. You have similar thing in Eclipse and in other uh, development environments. <coughs> I already mentioned the this keyword. This keyword means the current, uh, the current uh, object which we talk about. So if we have if we have this set horsepower of HP, we say this dot horsepower equals to HP. If we skip this this point, the compiler will also find that the only possibility for this uh, this string and this string matches the um, the internal field. But it's highly recommended then when you access a local field. From the class to always have this point okay so it refers this refers to the current object and is used to access the internal fields and also internal methods i can also write something like this point dot set horse power i can refer uh, fields and um, methods as well because both are members of the class and it prevents conflict. Let me show you what conflict is. For example, if I have set brand and I press brand equals to brand, what will happen? This means that this brand will be assigned, assigned to itself and this brand will never be changed. So if I write this code, brand equals to brand, this is the parameter and this is uh, intended to be this, but it's not. <laughs> when I run the program, you'll see that brand will always be missing. It will be no. In Java, when a string doesn't have a value, it's a no. No means that there is no value. Okay, so if I say this dot brand this 
will be I press control and the mouse. This is the member field and this is the parameter. This is the member field, this is the parameter. So uh, this help us to solve the naming conflict when we have two names which are the same, brand and brand. And it's always recommended to have this point because sometimes you may have this mistake. Of course, IntelliJ idea says, oh, this is a redundant assignment. It shows you that there is something wrong here, but you may not notice. So after I fix this mistake, this bug, now the program runs correct. Okay, let me show you another uh, very interesting and very helpful feature in Java that all objects in Java, all classes are designed to have the possibility to define the to string method, which returns their string or textual representation. When we print an object internally to string is invoked. For example, when we print a string, uh, or when we print an, an array or a array list, uh, its to string method is involved. So if, let me show you what will happen when we print a car. Okay, we'll have this car uh, Toyota, and I want to print the car. Just I print the Toyota. When I print this Toyota, uh, it by by design the class name together with the internal object reference, the address in the memory to be uh, more clear are printed. And this is not what we want. If we want to print a car, maybe we want to print something like this. So how to print the car correctly? I need to have a public string to string method which returns something like uh, I'm car and model is for example this dot model plus uh, First, the brand, but I'll try to copy paste. Brand is this does brand. I don't use get brand here because I'm inside this class. The class itself is allowed to uh, read its internal state, and it's normal. For example, uh, in the car service the service technician is allowed to open the engine but you as a car driver you just use the engine without entering into details what's inside so here the car is printed together with its brand and its model and in brackets i'll have horsepower and plus HP something like this and let's see what will happen instead of this I'll have I'm a car brand Toyota model Yaris and 170 HP or I can define this automatically for example see i again press out insert or right button generate but now i choose to string okay and it tells me what to string and how to how to implement this uh string and cut and it has some kind of mm, patterns but let's use the default it just prints this print car brand model horsepower it just prints 
all the fields. So it says I'm a car, brand Toyota, model Yaris, horsepower 170. I preferably pref you, mm, mm, prefer to, to have this without the brackets, but this is how IntelliJ IDEA automatically generates to string. You can also have something like, which is more readable, string dot format and you say for example car of grand person s uh, for example model mm, let this be in with small letters model uh, person s and power person D and then say uh, send the arguments uh, brand this don't brand this dot model and this dot power power okay instead of this so I changed uh, this to be in more readable uh, format car brand model power using a formatting strings and when I run it, it is like this. Maybe you see this override. It's not necessary, but it says that this is uh, something which comes from the object class because oh, this is an inheritance in Java. When you define a class car, uh, its parent class is object and object defines this to string. So you override the default. Override means that you change, you replace the old implementation with a new one. The old implementation, you already know it, control F5, very well. It prints this one. And I want to replace this uh, with, to override this with this. And when I press control F5, now it works differently. Uh, if you skip this, it will run, but it's recommended when you override an action method from the parent to have this add override. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to tell you about to string. And here is an example. I already explained this and demonstrated how it works. So I already explained how to use the to string generator from the IntelliJ IDEA ID. And now we'll solve a exercise problem, hands-on exercise, where we will define a class car, which holds brand model horsepower. We define a to string, which gets the value in format brand colon model colon horsepower okay so this is how our class may look like and this is called a uml diagram uml unified modeling language diagram this diagram have a name fields section and actions method section uh, section okay and minus means private plus means uh, public and uh, asterisk means protected. Okay, so this is the return type with column. Uh, and when our class is ready, we should be able to define the class like this. New car, set brand model, horsepower like this, print it. And when we print it, the to string should print this one. So we already have this solved. So I will uh, just modify this to have the brand name column model column horsepower. And when I run it, control F5, it works like this. Toyota Yaris column Yaris calls 170. And this is the 
solution. This is what we expect. And I have already did this and I will not repeat it, but generally you define these three fields, you define getters and setters with right click generate. Uh, you define the to string like this. And finally, you will you should write the code to enter a brand model and horsepower and create a car and print the car. And uh, we should put the main method in the class car because uh, this problem is designed to be, let me find it, uh, car info, is designed to be the code to be put here. But here I can put only one class. So I should put everything in one, in one class. So my main method will not be here. It will be here in, inside the car class. Let me show you how to do this. I use this shortcut PVSM public static void main. Huh. PV. Strange. It doesn't work. Public class car static void main. No. PV public static static PSVM or sorry PSVM public static void main this is the shortcut for this because it's too too long to type it uh, by hand and here I'll have a scanner scanner equals to new enter scanner of system dot in Okay, so I will have string. Uh, the first line will hold a brand. This is what the problem statement says. You are given at the first line the brand, at the second line the model, at the third line you are given the horsepower. You need to create a car object from all these properties and then this you should print this by to string or just by uh, system out printer n and the output should be like this this is the problem we solve okay so i have these three fields i have generated automatically these fields I don't really need this one, but it's not a problem. I created to string, generated it and modified it a bit. And finally, I read the brand like scanner dot next one. Sorry, next one. Uh, then I will copy this shift, uh, shift down, control C, control V, control V, control V, and I'll have brand model and I will have also uh, horsepower HP which is int but I can use next int and finally I'll say var car car equals to mm, new car I can either say car or var which takes the mm, which takes the, the correct type from from the right side so if i create a car this will be of type car if i create a array list this will be of type array list this is how var works okay let, let's use the traditional car car uh, okay so what i'll do here is that I will assign the brand model and horsepower car dot set model of model car dot set hmm autocomplete it's genius thing brand and car dot set horsepower of HP and finally I'll print the car let me show you what will 
happen. I run the car. Quas. So I mm, enter, for example, Skoda Felicia. 100 works like it looks like it's correct so i take all this code and i copy it copy or control a control a select all control c control c out tab i go here i open this car info i paste it control v and i submit it and after that i'm waiting for my result and it's correct so this is the result remember that in this problem if you have this uh, space here you are allowed to send only a single file so you should put all your code in a single file here you don't need this main you have only one single file okay so we are done with this problem and we are happy uh, this is one of your hands-on exercises and I highly recommend that you don't only watch this video but you type the code because learning is done by doing. There is no other way to learn programming. So I already demonstrated all of this. Let's talk about constructors. Constructors in Java classes assign object to initial state and they allow to more efficiently and uh, with less code to create objects and initialize them in the same time. Let's see how this works in action. So constructors are called when an object is created. This is a definition of a constructor and it says if you want to create a car and you know its brand, please provide the brand and I will create a car for you and the brand will be initialized. The constructor has, in most cases, should be public. It has the same name like the class. It doesn't have void or return type. It's always void, but void it's not written anywhere. And it may accept or not uh, parameters. Or parameters could be missing. Uh, so this is how it, this works. This is a constructor uh, definition. And when you call a constructor you say new this is a mistake you say please car car equals to new car and you provide initial values one or more parameters uh, values for the um, to be supplied to the constructor to create the object so the only way to call a constructor in java is through the keyword new you can't call a constructor in another way or one constructor can call another but this is again through the new keyword by the end of the day okay so let me show you how this works i already have this my class uh, car from the previous uh, section and it doesn't have constructors it has getters setters etc i will uh, collapse this to, to save some space on the screen so I have private fields I have some getter setters etc I have to string and I have the main method and I want to create a constructor it's usually constructors are at the start of the class just after the fields usually you write class then the fields first then constructors getter setters then the other methods and finally some some additional functionality okay so i define public car of string brand okay and i say this dot brand equals brand because without this this the left and the right side will be the same but i want to assign this brand okay and what what's different here when i create a car i cannot create car i no longer can create a car without specifying the brand because i don't have an empty constructor if i don't have this constructor this is allowed but if i define this constructor i can 
only create a car by supplying its brand. So I will see the the brand which is brand. Okay, and I don't need to save it again because it will be set. And when I print this and I have, for example, BMW X5 of uh, 150 horsepower, it works correctly. I can also uh, define several constructors. See, I can have only brand, but I have, have can have another constructor which uh, accepts it at the as input string brand and string model and I will assign the model as well okay so now I can say new card of brand and model which is save some code and makes my code more clear okay so when I run it it will run again as expected to your I can Right Toyota Yaris, for example, 120 horsepower, <clears throat> and it works as expected. I can even have one more constructor here, and I can, in fact, generate it. See, generate, and I choose constructor, and I choose which fields should be passed as uh, parameters, and it just generates it for me. It's better, and I have I can create a car like this. Let me show you. I can say var car uh, car equals to new car, and I can say that the car is just Toyota, and this works. Uh, I can print the car, and this will work. Well, I already have this, I will command it uh, and I will restart the program again. So I have Toyota Yaris and the mod, not Yaris, the model is no and this, the horsepower is also no. But I can say that this is Toyota Yaris and it will be Toyota Yaris with zero horsepower. But I can also specify the horsepower. And this is very typical in object-oriented programming. Sometimes you can create an object uh, specifying all its internal values. But sometimes you rely on the default values and you don't care. You just need a Toyota. You don't care what kind of Toyota it will be. Or sometimes you need a Toyota Yaris with certain horsepower and with some other parameters, for example, uh, color uh, red. So this is how constructors work. So constructors like methods don't don't have return types and they follow this pattern: public, the name of the class, and parameters. Parameters could be empty, like here. And here I overload the default constructor. If if a class doesn't have any constructors, the compiler will write one, which is without parameters and it, it's empty. But if you define one constructor, the default will disappear. So you can define multiple constructors like this. I already explained and demonstrated this. And constructors uh, should mm, assign the object's initial state. So, for example, if the car holds a list of parts and you have some other class part already defined, it's a good idea that in the constructor you initialize these parts because if you want to add a new part, you should have an empty list to be able to add. Otherwise, these parts will be null and when you try to add a new part, uh, you will have a no pointer exception. Okay, let's go ahead, uh, but remember that oh, classes should keep their object state consistent. Object, the object state should always be correct, should always be meaningful. Uh, incorrect state in the object, it's not a good idea, you, you should avoid it. Uh, 
and constructors can be chained, which means that one constructor can call another one. This is called by this and parameters. And this could be only at the first line of, of this. I'll show you how this works in, in IntelliJ idea in action. So I have several constructors here. I have car with a brand, but I can just sell, say this a brand and no. When you want to create a current of a car of certain brand, please call this constructor and supply the brand and no as a model. And when you want to create this, I can call this have brand model and for example, minus one. I want that in all cases when the horsepower are not specified, this to be minus one, which is a special value, which means that there is no mm, horsepower defined already. And now this constructor is the main constructor. It may have some validation, for example, check if uh, the brand uh, is, for example, from 10 to 20 letters. The model should be from uh, 10 to 100 letters, for example. There could be some limitations. The horsepower, for example, could not be negative or it could be minus one, which is a special value, but it cannot be minus 120. And it could not be, for example, 10 millions. So here we can have some validations and the other constructors can call each other. So uh, let me show you how this works. If I want to create Toyota without anything else, and I run this through the debugger, uh, I will press F7. It will first go to this constructor. Then it will go here at the second constructor. And finally, it will go the third constructor and will create Toyota uh, with no values. And when I print it, the result will be uh, like this. I need to return it and print it. It is Toyota no minus one. <coughs> So this is how constructor chaining works. I can say uh, this, but I cannot do like this. I first should call the parent constructor and later I can make some modifications. But the opposite is not a wall about this will not compile. Okay, so I can generate constructors. I already explained this and demonstrated this. And now it's time to solve a hands-on exercise problem. It is about defining a class car, which holds brand model and horsepower. And to have three constructors, parameterless constructor by brand and model and by brand model and horsepower, and to have a string uh, with this. So this is how it looks like as a diagram. We have three private fields and three constructors and one to string. I will show this from the zero. I will delete this class car and we'll start from absolutely from, from the zero. New class car. To, to show you how fast this could be, I have a class car and I define the first uh, string uh, brand private string model and private string um, it's not string it's int horse power and now I generate out insert I generate constructor without anything empty constructor which assigns nodes everywhere I insert another constructor with out insert the second, which is by brand, I insert another constructor, which is by brand and model, and yet another constructor, which is by the full set of elements. I could call, like, uh, to avoid this, 
code, I can invoke the by, to ch by chaining brand model and for example mm, horse power minus one for example and I could also generate getters and setters for my fields getters and setters I select all the fields click OK I have get brand set brand get model set model get horsepower set horsepower and I will generate my to string and to string says something like uh, return brand plus comma uh, colon plus plus uh, model it it is better to have this dot brand this dot model and column plus this dot uh, horsepower but I need to have an if this is minus one if this is not initialized I should skip um, printing it okay so I should do something like this if horsepower equals to minus one then return uh, sorry return this control CV brand and model otherwise return brand model horsepower and now I ha can have public static void main and just test this class car c equals to new car of Toyota Yaris and print the car control f5 we'll run this so I have Toyota Yaris like this oh it's run in the bug mode I should have run car Toyota Yaris but if it has some horsepowers uh, it should be printed as well and that's all <laughs> I'm, I'm ready so let me see uh, I'm ready with this which you see on the screen see it looks like it's too much work but if you know your shortcuts if you know well Java if you know how classes, uh, constructors, and properties work, it's just five minutes. Okay, so using the car class, I should write a, a, a Java program which reads brand model and horsepower, and the horsepower is optional. I should create a car object and uh, print it using to string. So I, I will be given either three lines holding uh, brand model and horsepower, or three lines holding brand model and empty and if this is empty I should use the other constructor so let me show you I'll have uh, scanner scanner uh, control space equals to new scanner of system dot in and mm, I'll have something like uh, please string brand equals <clears throat> to scanner dot next one I read the brand then I read the model scanner that dot next one then I will read the mm, horsepower but as a string because it could be either empty or uh, next one and now I will check something like this if HP dot equals empty string then I will define my car something like car car and car will be assigned if I have uh, empty by new car of brand and model Otherwise, if our horsepowers are not empty, car will be new car of brand model and horsepower. But I should parse this integer dot parse int of HP because this is a string value and I want to have it as integer value. Or I can. Mm, just do like this 
uh, int uh, horse power equals to this one to simplify the code this is the same and finally so the first step is to read the input the second step in my solution is uh, create a car object and the final is print the car object as system out print when of car let me test this control f5 so i enter toyota yaris enter without with empty horse speed works as expected and i will have also uh ford mondeo 150 works as expected let's go in the judge and take our score so this is a kind of um, way to have it uh, implemented but it's quite similar so car with constructors i have in the clip bar my solution i paste it the code i just uh, wrote and it will take some time to be processed processed by the judge and it's correct so that's all in object-oriented programming, we can have the so-called static members or shared members, which are basically values assigned to the class itself and not to the separate object. So if we have 20 cars, for example, if a member is a static for the class car, it will be shared only one instance, shared between all the objects. So static fields and methods and constructors are called static members. Let's see learn more about them. Static members are uh, defined through the static keywords and they uh, can be accessed through the class name. Let's see how this works. Static members, as I already, as I already explained, shared class-wide members and they are shared between all the instances of the class and you don't need an instance in order to use them. This is an example how it works. I have class program and it says bank account which is a class dot set interest rate of 2.2 let me show you this in action in intellij idea to get a better uh, idea of this concept so i'll create a java class static example and in this static example i will put something like for example public static final means unmodifiable uh, string for example p equals to 3.14159 for example and uh, it's not it should be double so if i have uh, if i want to have several uh, classes in the same file i'll show you something additional i can have a public class uh no this will be class mat and i'll have uh, because the the class name and the file name should be the same so here a uh, static example should match the public class name but i can't have another public class in the same file but i can have a file like this which is not public okay uh, a class which is not public and i can have this uh, okay psvm public static void main so i have this this class uh, here and in this class i can print the mat.p and this will be my mat class and this p but this is static i'm not sure that i can say that the class is static but the field should be static if it's not static this will not work mm -hmm. see non-static field cannot be referenced from a static concept so if i run this i'll get uh, this value but i can have also for example public 
const uh, public static final int zero equals to zero, for example, and I can print the mat dot zero. I can create instances of this class mat, for example, mat m1 equals to new mat. Please create a mat for me. And mat m2 equals to new mat. Okay, so, but if I print m1 dot p, it's not there. See, it's not part of m1. It's part of the class itself. Do you see how it works? So static members are, are static. You may also have a static constructor. It's very strange like this. I am the static constructor. The static constructor is executed when the first uh, touch to the class is happens. So first the static constructor will come, then huh it's strange how this works. Uh, I'm not sure how this works, but okay we can go through the debugger debug so I have this F8 and now I can access this but when I create an instance before the instance is created the static constructor is run once but it's not it's not quite important so we may have also a static method for example uh, public static uh, calc circle area uh, of double radius okay so if I want to it should return double if I want to return this I can just uh, create a return uh, p multiplied by uh, the radius by the radius so I can now uh, print mat tot please calculate the circle area for the radius of 5 and this will run as expected this is the circle area but this is a static mat dot I can reference this p or I can write mat dot p which is a better way to this is why this point I will remove this because I don't need it but this is the idea of static I have instances but I can't tell instance dot calculate no it is a member of math that's that's how it works I hope it's clear for you let's go ahead uh, I have another example here. I have a bank account uh, which holds accounts, how many accounts are there created in the bank totally and a static interest rate because the interest rate is the same for all accounts. Uh, if Peter has account and Mariah have different account, they both have the same interest rate. So bank account, when it's created, it uh, automatically assigns um, uh, an account the counter is increased and we can change the interest rate globally through a static member that changes this global or static uh, interest rate to, to a certain rate. So we'll solve a problem, a practical hands-on exercise where we should create a class bank account with the following fields and methods. It will have IT, uh, an account ID which starts from one and increases automatically. It will have balance, it will have interest, which is static. Balance is how many money are there in this account. Interest is global annual shared interest rate for all accounts. It's on an annual base. 
and the default is 0 0.15, which is 15% per year. And uh, we can change statically the interest rate and we can de deposit some money inside and we can calc interest by month. Uh, so the interest is uh, the balance multiplied by the interest rate uh, multiplied by the months and divided to 12 because the interest rate is annual on annual basis. Let's define this class bank account. So I will create a new uh, Java class which is called bank account and I will start with the fields in it. I will define the fields. The first fields it's ID private int ID. Each account has different ID okay and it will have also private double balance it will have balance also and it will have also uh, interest but it will be static uh, interest this is the um, interest and it will have uh, set interest deposit and calc interest I will create uh, the interest is double I will define some constructors so I will insert a constructor where, which will be without parameters and it will say that this dot balance is zero initially and this dot it is equals to, uh, uh, to plus plus count and I will have the count which will be static uh, how many instances of this class uh, are already created private static uh, count is zero uh, int I can initialize here which is the same as initializing in all the constructors okay and but once I am not obligated to initialize it here because it will be zero or I can just say here like this the balance is initially zero but now the bank account has a unique value okay it has balance it has id i can create um uh, to string for example let, let's say uh it holds the id and balance and i will create public static void main and i will create uh, one bank account uh, account equals to new uh, bank account and I will create a bank account and I will print it so initially when I run this I will have account ID 1 has zero balance it looks like it works correctly and if I create a second account it will be account ID 2 it looks like this numbering works correctly again how it works I have a counter which is shared between all instances it's private so nobody can access it or change it it, it doesn't have getter or setter when I create a count uh, this ID which is also private field and cannot be changed by external classes uh, is automatically assigned through this account okay so let's go ahead we have interest set interest let's generate setter for the interest uh, out insert setter for the interest it is just change the interest it is through the global it's not this dot interest but it's bank account because it's static again the interest rate or let's uh, change it uh, interest uh, rate Okay, the interest rate, it, the setter is also changed. Uh, with Shift F6, I can uh, rename. The interest rate is global and it's static, so it's shared between all accounts. I can deposit, so I will write a method uh, here deposit. So public uh, void deposit. Uh, double value if I deposit some value this dot balance will be increased by this value right I increase okay so I can calc interest uh, so it's a public uh, 
and double calc uh, interest of months int how many months so uh, the formula is already there I have this dot per ones how many money I have multiplied by uh, the rate the annual interest rate I will use this syntax bank account dot the global interest rate multiplied by the number of months divided by 12 because the rate is annual not monthly and I'm ready with this and I believe I'm ready with all of this let me check if this works so if I have uh, this second account and I deposit uh, 5000 5000 and then I deposit more 3000 uh, I should have control of 5 I should have a balance of 8000 okay and if I print the second account dot calculate interest uh, for five months it should be uh, let me have a calculator it's 8000 multiplied by interest which is oh the default rate I forgot it uh, see the default rate is 0 0.15 uh, the default rate should be 0 0.15 uh, okay so if i calculate this for five months it should be eight thousand by 0 0.15 by the rate by five months divided by 12 it should be 500 so let me check whether it works correctly yes it's 500 okay so what's next uh, maybe we should change the interest rate to be a uh, bank account dot set interest rate to be uh, 50 persons and let me check whether uh, the interest will change yes of course it changes so I think I'm ready with creating this class class which holds accounts which holds automatically assigned id which changes over the time through this static uh, internal counter which increases when we create a new account it should be here in all the constructors if we have others as well we have to string and we have the other operations and now i need to create a program which uh, reads and executes commands Comments like this. Let's see the example. You can read this, but it's it's better to see the example. When I create, I should print. If I get this com command create, I should see, print account one created. If I have this command deposit one, I should deposit this to account one. Create, deposit, etc., 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 and let's start uh, printing this. So I will need a scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in and I press um, for example I, I will need to have something like uh, hash map of integer and account and bank account to hold the accounts accounts uh, which will be a new new uh, hash map of accounts when i have a new account i will store it here because uh, here i i if i need to deposit in account number two uh, i i should be able to find this account so i will have a hash map you already know about hash maps from the hash maps lesson so i will do something like this while uh, true i will read something like uh, string command equals to scanner uh, scanner equals to scanner dot next next one okay and if the command is and if 
command uh, dot equals of and I will do something like uh, print goodbye and return or or just break from the loop. Okay, this is the first command and the second command is create if the command is uh, create i will create an account i will say uh, bank account account equals to new bank account i'll create the account and i will put it in the accounts accounts dot uh, put of account dot it because i know i want to have a mapping from the account id to the account itself in the hash map and i need to print something like i account to is created so i print something print f account number two uh created okay so i print the account id and this is the the create command command uh, and the next command is deposit uh, so if i have deposit uh, so mm, i need to parse the, the the other two so i will have a string comment parts equal to the command mm, command dot uh, split no split by space okay and i will have the account id Mm, and uh, int account id is equal to inted, integer integer dot parse of comment part of one because zero is the it's something like this this is the part zero this is part one this is part two after the split okay so i split the command one and i have the account id so i need to have the bank account bank account uh, uh, account equals to um, so i can have the bank account this is the all accounts dot give me the account by id and the specified id so if it is it, it, it exists if uh, account e exists then i should do mm, the the deposit right i should i already hold the account i will have also the i should parse the mm, deposit value deposit value is the second parameter this is uh, this one this is the account this this account id this is the account value this is the entire command this is the part zero part one part two when i split it okay so i will have something like account dot uh, deposit of deposit value and i should print deposited a number to account so i should print something like deposited uh, percent f uh, because it's floating point value oh it should not be int it should be double because it's floating point parse double and here i should have double as well uh, deposited percent dot to f because uh, by design i should have two um, it's it's already explained here two digits after the decimal point uh, okay so um, let me continue um, to account number percent d so i have account uh, i have deposit value and the account id yes this should be and otherwise if the account is missing so for example they want me to deposit in account two million uh, the value of five dollars i will say 
uh, account is not found account the number uh, which is this one not found okay and this is the deposit command and I have also to write the calc interest calc interest I need account number and months so it's very similar account ID I get it uh, and if I have a uh, months here will be in months in here i'll have integer dot parse in of the second parameter uh, and dot calc interest uh, account no calc interest of months and home uh, double rate equals to this and I should print interest person point two f because I have to uh, print with two decimals after the decimal point point two f and and that's all and set interest or if the account is missing here I will print account not found and the final command is this one not calc interest it will be set interest set interest and it will be something like uh, I get the int there is no count ID here I just read the I need to read uh, just to, to, to save some time I should read double value rate and I just invoke something like uh, bank account dot set interest rate of rate and I print something like interest interest rate change interest rate changed percent uh, dot to f and the new rate so set interest takes the rate changes and that's all and i should do something like if and then otherwise else else if it should be it should be if else if else here I should have else if the first command else the second command uh, else the third com command then the else the next command okay and finally I will print something like invalid command and the command the uh, command name and that's all and let's see whether this works so <laughs> I don't have a big change for this to work as expected in immediately but I'll try to create an account hmm, account one created create again account two created okay I what I have missing is the new one I use print F here but everywhere print one this is print f i need to have a new one i need to have a new one here i need to have a new one here this is what i'm missing print f without a new one mm. a new one here a new one here and invalid command it's print one without f so i will start again control f5 and let me check create account one okay so what are the other commands deposit deposit in account one five thousand 
invalid command that wasn't one hmm. why uh, oh I because this is because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see I should split mm -hmm. like this the command parts here and if I in I should check the command part of zero uh, because the first part so it should be like this uh, this is my mistake because I get the entire command and not the command without the parameters because it's like this so this is uh, what I should change and this is no longer needed because I first uh, I made uh, I found a mistake and I I made a fix so I first read the command then I split the command into parts so if the first part if the command start is end the first part is this one I do this if the if it starts with create and space I run this and etc so let's start I have fixed another bug so I press create okay so I want to deposit in account one 500 and it says okay so I want to deposit in account 25 500 it should say invalid account not found okay like this so the next thing I should create is calc interest calc uh, interest of account one for three months so I have account one with 500 uh, by 0 0.15 default rate by uh, three months di divided to 12 it looks like it's correct uh, I should change now the interest rate set interest of 0 0.5 50 percent is changed uh, I don't need to have this uh, sorry is changed 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 set interest this one is not should not be here this is not needed and finally I should calc interest for account one for three months it should be different okay and finally if I say uh, if I say end it will tell me goodbye and the program is stopped hmm, works correctly let let let's check this example I get copy uh, I go into IntelliJ idea control F5 I press control V here no control V no looks like this is not copied copy control V and uh, it's something like uh, account one created 2000 okay let's let's go in the judge and check so I have this code and I will call at the church system and this is the bank account and I will put this code and will submit it and if I have a look uh, to have no mistakes I will have it correct oh it's incorrect deposited ah, I have I have this uh, deposited deposited this one is not needed so I will create a second submission I submit I refresh 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 several times and it's okay so finally I'm ready with this uh, problem so mm, here I have some code with references but I already I already implemented this so it's now your time for your coding exercises please do your exercises because learning coding is done by coding this is why just like uh, watching a video about riding uh, a, a bicycle or driving a car you should do it that's all you should do it so please make your exercises just follow my code or try to write yourself and submit it in the software judge uh, I have shown everything you, you need so please train your skills because if you want to become a developer you need to code 
train your skills until you have a judge to, to check whether you are on the right position or not. And if you have some questions, go out soft to New York, register, and you, you have a, a way to, to answer your mentors. So in summary, classes define fields, methods, constructors, getters, setters, and other members, members, and I have already uh, shown how to deal with them. Fields should be private, methods are in most cases public, constructors assign the state for the objects, getters and setters expose uh, the access for reading and writing to fields. Constructors initialize the objects to the uh, initial state and they can be overloaded. So you can have multiple constructors with different sets of parameters. And they are invoked through the keyword new when you the new is called a constructor, one of the constructors or several constructors in the chain are called. Static members belong to the class itself and they don't belong to the object and their values are shared between all objects. So did you like this lesson? Do you want more? If so, go at Soft New York, register, and you will uh, get access to all the free code lessons from Nakuf and Soft Uni. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications for new videos, uh, code lessons, and other uh, coding uh, videos. Uh, because you will get access to the free code lessons, you, you will get help from the mentors if you register at softuni.org. We have a private uh, chat uh, for the members only. It's also free and you will meet other learners and discuss with, with them. So it's all free. So please join now. Soft to knee.